Hi everybody, I'm Michael Bunker and I'm going to be your host for the afternoon. This is Q&A Thursday, episode number one. And so I promised everybody I was going to do a Q&A Thursday and I promised it last Friday, I think. And then a bunch of stuff's been going on. It's been so hot. I think today is like six or seven days straight over 100 or 100 or over and um got a little bit of a breeze coming in this window and i got my little fan going right here and a little electric fan i'm down at the office which is one of the only really the only place where we have a limited amount of solar power you know, people lose their minds when you uh when you're off grid and they see some perceived hypocrisy so um Yes, we do have a little bit of power at the office. That's how I charge devices. That's how I charge this cell phone camera and uh, those type of things. That's how I write books. And uh, this is this is it. This is the area where uh, the magic happens. So um, right there in that general area right over there is where USA Today best-selling author Michael Bunker writes uh, nonfiction, fiction, sci-fi, etc., Anyway, so I promised a Q and A, uh, and uh, I got quite a few questions, but it's been so busy around here, and um, I was going to do this outside, and my, I don't know what I'm going to do to keep my coiffure in order. This is crazy. Um, we ended up having to go to town, and spent most of the morning in town, which I don't like to do, but uh, did find out they have a uh, new, uh, an actual like coffee shop. Like a citified coffee shop now in Santa Ana, Texas. So we went by there this morning, got a coffee. It's pretty cheap. Uh, I got a large Americano, which is also I won't, I won't say that's what I am because I'm a Tex Texicano, but uh, I am large. So, all right, so we got questions. Uh, I want to remind everybody that if we're going to keep doing this Q&A Thursday uh, for the How We Do Stuff series, uh, make sure that you put your questions down in the comments section. It could be about anything, uh, any stuff you'd like us to do, whatever videos you'd like us to, to shoot, etc. Uh, question number one. Hi, Michael. Thanks for your channel and videos. You are welcome. A video tour with a total systems overview of how you handle the different aspects of daily life and work off grid would be great sometime. Thanks. Yeah, yeah, we might do that sometime, like just like an overview. That's it's really what we're doing with the whole series. It's going to be showing all of our systems and how we do things and how they developed and the different levels of ways we do things according to the bunker principle. But yeah, I think maybe sometime we do that, just do kind of a tour of the property and show. Uh, we're not really ready for that yet. We're still working on a lot of infrastructure. And and it's been, like I said, it's been really, really, really hot and dry. But thanks for that uh, request. And I'm going to seriously think about that. All right. Number two, are you growing and aging your own tobacco leaf? If not, where are you getting them? I have uh, grown and aged my own tobacco leaf. Growing it is fairly easy. Aging it is very difficult when you're off grid. Someday I'll show that process because we don't live in the tropics. And so humidifying and curing tobacco in a dry environment like this is very, very difficult. But we've done it and uh, produced some pretty good uh, tobacco. And so, uh, but, but now when I'm not growing it, um, I buy it from uh, leaf.com. That is not an advertisement because I don't get uh, I don't get any remuneration or pay from them. I'm just telling you where I get it. Leaf.com. They got pretty good prices and really, really good products. So that's where we get it. All right. Very nice. Thanks. Number three, how large is the cistern itself? What material is it made of? How did the old timers do it? Now, I did two videos this past week or two that showed our cistern. Uh, and we built that cistern by hand. Um, it is called a ferro cement cistern, and you can find different uh, ways of doing that on on, uh, on YouTube. Ours is 3,400 gallons, I think, is is what it is. And um, we dug a big hole, 
and then we poured a uh, circular kind of like a slab but it's inclined toward the middle and it has a little uh, low area and you'll see what that's for if you watch the videos on on ferro cement cisterns ferro cement so it's like a ferro uh, strike lighter it, which means metal and uh, it's it's basically taking um, uh, metal and embedding it in cement and it's a different uh, it's a special concoction of cement but basically what we did is we we got this special um, it looks like roof metal roofing but it's got uh, slits cut in it to let water drain through and uh, we made a big uh, form a circle that was probably I'm gonna say 10 11 12 feet in diameter and then um, we uh, wrapped that with wire thin wire and then we wrapped that with no what we wrapped that with chicken wire tightened that then wrapped that in wire and all of that's going to get embedded in the in the cement and then you go through and you and you basically paint it with this cement several coats and you you rough it up between coats and then when you get like the third coat and between each coat you're doing a wrap of wire that's what gives it its uh, strength and then you get on the inside and you unscrew the metal roofing and you pull it out and um, and then you do the same thing on the inside you you rub it with that cement several coatings that ties it to the floor so it's and then you paint it with the cement milk that makes it virtually waterproof water so it doesn't leak when you get up towards the top you place rebar into the walls that's bent and that forms the roof and then you uh, you do the same thing with the uh, chicken wire and the wire and you and you, you you make your roof the circle of the hole and then you you pour your little lid that's basically I think it took us maybe uh, a week or to ten days to make it it was it was very very labor-intensive but it was very inexpensive so it's about 3,400 gallons, and then we catch water off several of the roof lines into that cistern. All right, I don't know if that was boring, but uh, one of these days, uh, if I, I made some video while we were making it, and I'll try to pull that out and make a video about the making of the cistern. Question number four. Uh, what kind of backup systems are available to you in an extended drought situation, I can't recall if you have a pond. Uh, we do have a small pond, and that's what we use for our uh, water, uh, for our animals, and for our uh, gardens. We have a small solar pump that uh, very, very, very low volume solar pump that basically trickles water up the hill to the garden, where we fill barrels, and then we water with uh, watering cans, water the gardens. And then we have it piped to the different areas where the animals are, except for the pigs, which we hope to eventually get it there. And that's how we get water to the animals. And so all of that water comes out of the pond. Then that really is our backup system. We've got a water catchment down here at the office. We have water catchments here and there, you know, off the barn. And um, most of our water comes from rain catchment. And we have the big cistern. So... Um, how did the old timers did it basically just like we're doing it only without the solar uh, uh, pump for the garden we could actually put a pitcher pump or a uh, shallow well pump in the garden uh, it's less than a 25 foot rise down to the pond and and probably pump water uh, into buckets and carry it for the for the gardens that's probably one way the old timers did it old 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 timers uh, cisterns or wells hand dug wells um, and then just carrying water in buckets. Uh, that's really the way it would have been done. All right. Boy, every once in a while, I just get a little breeze. And uh, it's like God's own mercy when it's, uh, when it's hot. I don't know what the temperature is right now, but it's, and it's actually cooler than it's been. So I, it's, it's still early, but uh, it, this past week has been just brutal. All right. Is all of your cooking done outside in the warmer warmer months? No, uh, we have a propane stove, and when we do have propane, um, we cook on that. Uh, 
it's it's not too bad because our house is very airy we've got a lot of windows our cottage and so um but we do cook uh, eventually we will cook in a uh, lord willing we will be cooking in a summer kitchen or outside for all pretty much all year long until the winter because I'm, i want to build a uh, kind of a 17th 18th century cooking area with a bread oven and a uh, outdoor cooking area and I think we're going to end up using that for canning and for pretty much everything. We'll use wood for just about everything. I just don't want to keep buying propane. We may have that as a backup. All right. Number six, your filter rainwater for drinking in your Berkey, the big Berkey water filter. If I recall correctly, you are, you filter water, you filter rainwater for drinking in your Berkey. If I recall correctly. How often do you have to clean or replace the elements? I'd have to ask Mrs. Bunker on that. Um, it's not very often. The water that we get out of the cistern is really clean. In fact, we we can drink it straight. I'm not I'm not concerned about any any baddies in that water. Um, the main reason we filter it is because sometimes it can get some sediment in there, and it can get a little cloudy. But uh, we 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 drink that water, and and, and there's no problem with it. Uh, but um, so it it would it would take uh, several years before we would buy new filters. Most likely, that water is fairly clear, and those those filters can be cleaned. So I would have to ask Mrs. Bunker, but probably every two to three years, maybe maybe even more. All right, have you ever tried smoking salt? I've seen it sell very well with right marketing. I never have tried smoking salt. I might try it. Uh, of course, there's insert joke about smoking salt, whatever. Um, but no, I've never tried smoking salt. I might try it. Uh, we have our our smoker going a good part of the winter, and most of you have seen my big 12 foot by 12 foot uh, stone smokehouse, and we get that going most of the winter. So uh, what I'll do is, uh, I'll, if you'll remind me of that, come fall when we're smoking pork and bacon and everything else, remind me of that, and I'll. And I'll I'll make some. We'll see how it turns out. All right. What are your criteria for plain clothing? Are there rules or guidelines as far as styles or colors? Okay. So what you're talking about is called the ordnung in the plain community. We used to uh, be in the plain community here, but we are no longer in the community. We had a difference of opinion on theological uh, topics, and so. When we were in the community, there was an ordnung, which basically is like the rules of a family. So the rules in your family are made by the parents or whoever the head of the family is, and they're not written down. Rarely are they written down. They are just rules that everybody understands, that they're there for everybody's benefit, and uh, they're things everybody has agreed to, and those are the rules. And that's exactly what ordnung means in a plain Mennonite Amish community. They are unwritten, it's the unwritten rules of um, behavior, uh, including dress. And so um, our ordnung now with, within our family, we don't wear uh, bright colors, usually anything uh, unplain. Uh, with the ma males, um, I don't wear short sleeve shirts. I don't wear uh, shorts. I, I don't have, uh, I have... I don't have a collar on my shirt. It's the, this is the collar, but it's not the flip down part of the collar. Um, suspenders, loose fitting clothing, uh, not tight fitting clothing. Um, hat when I'm outside. Uh, plain. We just call it plain clothing. Uh, with, with the with the ladies, they make their own clothing. We have dress patterns that they use that they've agreed to to. Um, and aprons, uh, plain clothing, modest, like the males, um, everybody, it's, uh, not to be, uh, form hugging or, uh, or, uh, you know, how do you put it, immodest, what we would, what we in, in our system would consider immodest. Uh, we, we hope to emphasize the beauty of character and the beauty of simplicity and not the physical form, um, the kind of the prurient interest of the physical form. But pretty much that's, that's kind of the rules. 
Um, it's one of those things that's unwritten and you just know, you know, uh, uh, if, if, if what you're doing is not in, in concord with the spirit of what we call plain dress. And we understand a lot of you live completely different ways. The question was to me. So I answered the question based on the way we look at it. Doesn't mean that we're sitting there in town going, oh, you heart it. Because most of you men are harlots. You are harlots. The way you dress with your cargo shorts and your flip-flops. Harlots. All right. Uh, do you have an ample supply of wood on your land for heat? Uh, if not, how do you acquire a good supply by the fall? And how much is typically enough? Well, first, I guess I'll just take you and kind of just show you. We got an ample supply of wood. Um, I might jiggle, jiggle the, the camera here. I'm going to take it outside. See if I can show you. Uh, um... We got a lot of wood and some of it you won't be able to see this is all most of this down here is oak and i'm i'm for the most part when i get back here a little bit it's a kind of an oak forest and then up here up if you look behind me the light green uh here that's mesquite going several acres um and mesquite grows very, very fast. It's a hardwood, but it grows very, very fast. And we got a whole lot of that. And we burn mostly mo mo mostly mesquite. So uh, we burn a kind of combination of, I don't cut down oaks really unless I have to or unless it's kind of uh, necessary. Uh, but we burn a lot of mesquite. And we get a lot of deadfall. We burn a lot of deadfall. But yes, we have um, plenty of wood for our cooking and burning needs. And, um, and, uh, how much do we need? Boy, there's just no answer for that. Um, every year is completely different. We've had really, really cold winters where, um, where we've needed maybe several cords. My camera is acting up now. All right. Uh, several cords. And then, you know, this last year, I don't think we went through a cord of wood. Um, uh, maybe probably not and this year i didn't even i didn't even load up the firewood down here i just went out into the woods where i just showed you and picked up wood every time i needed a fire some years we might go through three four cords 2010 i think was a year that we went through a lot of wood so uh where's the other question let me see here um so typically enough there's not a typical we just kind of whatever we need to do um I'm curious what you do with the whey when you make cheese. I saved mine, but have yet to use it. Um, you can make some uh, things from it. You know, you can use it as a starter for fermentations. Um, for us, pretty much everything goes to the pigs or to the chickens. It gets mixed with feed. So anything we have left over, buttermilk, whey, whatever it goes in the pig bucket or danielle takes it she'll mix it with things and, and feed it to the chickens a very very high nutrition for the animals and that's basically basically what we do with all of it all right i'd look i'd like to know more about what herbs you use and how you use them <laughs> Also, did Danielle teach herself to sew or take a class? She did not take a class, but she did have some help when she first got started uh, with some friend. My hair, oh my gosh, it's like a, it's it's like, uh, I call this uh, drunken Beethoven, homeless Beethoven. Um, uh, she did not take a class, but she had a lot of help when she got started and kind of some people that took her under the wing and taught her a little. What herbs do you use and how do you use them? Um, Danielle does a lot of herbal uh, medications and things for different things that she has going on. She, I know she takes turmeric and a few other things. We all take cayenne. Uh, we grow our own cayenne. Um, I use a lot of herbs, as you've seen from these video series, in things like beverages. 
and we just now harvested a lot of nettles that we're going to use as a tincture and as a tea and um and then you know someday when i've got her on here for q a i'll ask her that question because she uses a lot of stuff that i may not know about really uh me personally i don't take anything unless i unless there's a specific reason for it i don't just take things because you know i'm I, I think I should be taking them. Uh, I take them because, you know, if I'm dr draggy or tired or I've got a sore throat or something, and then I'll, if I if I don't already know how to do it, I'll, I'll look it up and say, okay, well, I've got this. And, and then it, we've got herbs growing on the land. We've got gardens and, um, and that kind of thing. Uh, Danielle has some kind of, uh, some uh, differences because she does have some chronic pain and things like that from different medical issues and so she has hip pain and uh, and joint pain and things like that and she, uh, low blood pressure and stuff like that so uh, i'll have to ask her maybe i think that answer kind of solves it for me Ooh, water mm. ah delicious all right so i think that's it i might have missed some here's what you do you can Go to my Facebook, and it's facebook.com forward slash offgrid. You can message me questions, or you can just put messages on my, uh, you know, maybe you know, on my wall or whatever. Uh, you can also go down here in the comments, which is the easiest way, and put your questions, and I'll read them, and I'll put them in the next Q&A. Or, uh, you know, find a some, you know, carrier pigeon, baseball, shot put, pass thing, I don't know, whatever. Hope you get some more videos out um, uh, next week. Got some stuff we're working on. I uh, hope you're liking the video series on how we do stuff. Make sure that you subscribe. Subscribing is so important. And when you click subscribe here on the video, there's a little bell thingy. Click on that and then tell it you want to get notifications. And then every time I put up a video, it'll pop up and whatever and tell you so that you don't miss any of them. All right, y'all. I appreciate you so much. And uh, this is how we do stuff. We'll talk to you soon.